This video will cover the four new legendary weapons that Trendy added with the Ascension Part 2 patch. Um, each of these weapons has a special passive, and there is one per hero. So they are pretty neat, and I think that they're going to have a place for DPS heroes. They're not really built for builders, but I think for DPS heroes they'll be pretty good. So first, we'll start with the Huntress. The Huntress got the Bow Lantern. The passive is Pumpkinator. Targets hit with basic packs are pumpkined. You'll know you're pump or you pumpkined an enemy when their head turns into a pumpkin. Simple as that. Defeating a pumpkin enemy causes a physical explosion dealing 45% hero damage. Hitting a pumpkin enemy with a melee attack increases hero critical chance by 5% for 5 seconds. So I think this will actually be pretty good. Um, with the hero damage explosion, uh, I bet it goes up to 50%. Currently it's 45%. On my character currently, I have 17.7 uh, 7, thousand hero damage. So we'll take half of that. We'll say it's 9,000 damage I'll be doing per pumpkin enemy that explodes. That's pretty good. Um, it's not going to be huge in Nightmare 4, but I still think as a DPS item rather that t costs no defense units to use versus a Serenity Order, for example, it's pretty good. Um, you also get the slight synergy with melee heroes in that they get increased hero critical chance. I'm not real sure how important this is. Um, it'll help, obviously, for melee critical or melee heroes, but as right now, melee doesn't get that much play in Nightmare 4. Um, I don't know how, how much of a difference it's going to make. So I've got a couple of these. I'll show you. This is a um, Spooky 3 bow. So it fires in a triangle pattern. This pattern is a little bit large. I don't particularly like it. Um, you'll see here one or two of these. It looks like one is currently missing uh, the target. I will look at a spooky four bow. Sorry, This shoots in a straight line um, with three projectiles. Once again, it looks like one is still missing. So, this might be better on things that aren't target dummies, where they're a little bit larger, but it's still kind of an issue, I think. And finally, we'll go to the Spooky 6 bow. This shoots in a larger V pattern with five projectiles that also has a drop to it. Uh, so, this could be the worst out of the projectiles, in my opinion, but it it depends a little bit. Uh, I haven't seen what the other spooky bows do yet. I'm going to continue farming to find the other ones and probably when I get all of the projectile bows I'll do another video showing every possible combination. Alright, moving on to the Squire. They received the the Iron Reaper. The passive is Howling. It adds feast to stacks per attack. Each feast stack increases hero damage by half a percent. At 10 stacks, Howls change weapon speed and multiplied hero damage by 1.13 until a stack falls off. So I'll show you real quick what this looks like. It takes a little bit to build up three attacks with this heavy weapon. Or sorry, ten attacks. But after that, you actually do quite a bit. I've jumped from what, around 10,000 DPS, 12,000 DPS up to 15, 18, 17. Drops down back to 11, so it kind of goes all over the place. But it is a DPS increase. Um, I think this will also be pretty good for melee DPS. It's not the best, but especially if this comes in a medium or light uh, weapon swing, I think it'll be a lot better. So you'll attack faster and get more stacks quicker. Um, I still think it's pretty good though for DPS. So this is something that I would probably, if I'm doing a DPS Squire, which I probably won't be. This is actually something I'd take time to farm if I was. Next, we'll move on to the Apprentice. This one is the Raven's Claw. The passive is Raven Host. Attacks at a Raven stack. At 10 stack, spends all, all stacks to fire a magical Raven dealing 49% hero damage that bounces, five, bounces between 5 targets. So I'll show you what this looks like on the dummy here. This one fires in kind of a homing flat V shape pattern. And then, there you go, you can see it doesn't bounce in the tavern, but it does bounce in game. 
And once it bounces, you also see that you get this effect on your staff that causes this kind of glowing effect. And it doesn't seem to go away ever after you've used it for the first time. I can show it again here in the inventory. Um, I do like the model for this weapon quite a bit too, actually. And then finally, that was the Spooky 3 pattern. Here is the Spooky 5 pattern. I don't like this one at all. It's way too wide and it also has drop to it. Um, so I would avoid using Spooky 5 if you can. It's just, you'll really only ever be able to hit things with one or two of these projectiles. So it's not, for single target it's not good. And a lot of time you want single target for anti-air. And finally, moving on to the uh, monk, we have the Wailing Glaive. The passive is Haunting. Melee attacks add ghost stacks. Ghost stacks increase hero damage by half percent. At 10 stacks, ghost fires ghosts dealing 42% physical hero damage for 3 seconds. Ghosts spawn once per 5 seconds. So I'll show you once again on the dummy here. That's what it looks like. And to me, it doesn't seem to be doing damage over time when it says it does damage for 3 seconds. But I, it's hard to tell. Seems like it, it did 3,000 damage or so. No, it didn't do 3,000, because that would be max of my hero damage. 42% physical hero damage for 3 seconds. Let's try this again. I've tried to experiment with this, and it's hard to. I'm trying to get it to attack one of these other. But it won't hit them. So maybe you can't test this on the dummies. I still think that this will be a pretty good melee DPS weapon if it works correctly. As I said, I think all of these will be pretty good. Kind of a neat thing about this is you can see the blade is orange here. If you switch to this one that has water damage on it, the blade actually switches to kind of a cool blue color. I assume that the other ones do that as well, but I don't have any of the other... I don't have the fire or what, earth weapons yet to test it. So that's a brief rundown of the weapons. I do think that they'll be pretty good for DPS. Um, and if you are planning on building a DPS character, I would consider farming for these. Uh, it depends a little bit on the ranged ones, which projectile pattern you get. Um, and maybe there are some projectile patterns that are better than others, but I, I don't know yet. And I'll update you guys when I do. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them and I'll get back to you.